I wonder if you've ever really thought about Jesus Christ. Now, you might say, well, hold on a minute. There's so many people out there pushing religion and people who are talking about Jesus and talking. I, I, I've heard it all. I don't need to, to think about it. But please just bear with me for a moment or two. I want you to think about Jesus in a different light. I want you to understand something that makes him uniquely different from anybody else who ever lived. You know, many years ago, the poet and novelist Rudyard Kipling, he was addressing a, a class of graduates at McGill University. And he said to the graduates, I don't want you to care too much about money, power or fame, because someday you will meet a man of such stature that he will care for none of those things. And then you will realise how poor you are. They were quite unique words to say to a group of students, a group of graduates, that one day you'll meet a man of such stature that he will care for none of those things and then you will realise how poor you are. I don't know if Rudyard Kipling realised that his words really had already been fulfilled, but each individual in life would be well advised to come face to face with Jesus Christ. Now you might say to me today, I don't know if I, it's pretty impossible, you might say, for me to actually meet Jesus because Jesus lived 2015 years ago and as far as I believe he's died. Of course as a Christian I believe that he rose from the dead on the third day. I believe his death was not an ordinary death, I believe his death had significance. I believe that actually his death of crucifixion was the means by which God cancelled or made provision to cancel your guilt. He paid in full the just and legal price for sin. For we die because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Christ died to pay. The Bible says the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God. But think about Jesus. He was a man such as what Rudyard Kipling was talking about. His birth was contrary to the, no the normal laws of nature. In other words, well not his birth so much but his conception. He was conceived in the womb of the Virgin miraculously. You might not believe it. Modern medical science does wonderful things. And yet we dare to say that God could not do what we think is impossible to produce life in a womb without the, the contribution of a man in the normal process of producing life. Yet we have done technologically other things in that realm. His death was also contrary to the laws of death, for death is the result of sin. The Bible teaches that we are morally deficient. We do wrong and the wages of sin is death and we're all going to die as a result of that. But think about Jesus for a moment or two. He didn't have any farmland, he didn't have any fisheries, and yet he spread a table for 5,000 people and fed them with five loaves and two fish. He owned no beautiful carpets or velvet rugs, yet he walked on the waters of the Sea of Galilee. Socrates, Plato and Aristotle, three of the greatest men of antiquity, you know, they taught for a combined period of 130 years, yet Three years of the life of Jesus Christ transcends all their teaching. The words of Jesus are quoted on a daily basis. Amazing facts concerning Jesus. He wrote no book. He painted no painting. He wrote no music. Yet he is the greatest, the greatest of writers, poets, musicians have been inspired by him and used their talents to honour him and to express truth about him. He had no monetary backing. Yet he is the one central character of human history, the pivot around which all the events of the ages revolve. He's the regenerator of the human race. He brings salvation to broken hearts. He has a unique contribution to the race of men as he brought salvation to the souls of those who came to trust in him. You know, philosophy could not accomplish that. Art couldn't accomplish it. Literature, music, only Jesus Christ had the ability and has the ability to break the power of sin and to bring forgiveness. Was he merely the son of Mary? Did he merely walk the sands of time across the horizon of this world 2,000 years ago? Was it merely human blood that was spilt at Calvary? Or was he the redeemer of the world? Was he the son of God? Was Thomas right when he fell at his feet and said, my Lord and my God? I've given you a unique description of a unique man today. He left his footprint indelibly on the sands of time. He's not just another name in the scroll of history. He's the one who can meet your personal need. 
I wonder if you're ready to renounce your sin. Invite him into your life. Know his forgiveness. Experience his love and his peace. Remember, he made one sacrifice for sin forever. He is the saviour of the world. He can forgive your sins the way no one else can. He can bring you to God. He is the way, the truth and the life. And you can come to the Father through him. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ, about the Bible, about the truth that we're talking about, please visit our webpage, seekthetruth.org.uk. You can get in touch with us through that page. You can watch other videos. You can listen to podcasts. You can read blogs. Basically, you can access more information about Jesus Christ and the Bible. You need him. He died to bring you eternal salvation.